What is going on guys? My name is Kyle and I'm with High Point Scientific and today we're really excited to share with you guys our very first post-processing tutorial. Today we'll be going over how to take a beautiful, stunning super mosaic of the moon. Now a super mosaic is basically when you take a bunch of different panels of the moon at a high magnification and then you stitch them together in post-processing and the resulting image is one that is much higher quality and would look absolutely beautiful. So we're gonna be going over how to process those type of images, some tips and tricks that I have for you guys, and we will see that hopefully we get a final beautiful mosaic at the end of all of it. So let's go ahead and get started into the processing tutorial. Okay guys, so we've switched on over to my desktop and you can see that I have three different video of the moon. Let's go ahead and open those video really quickly and we can take a closer look at them. Just dragging it over here. And as you can see, we have a beautiful up close shot of the moon. Now I will say this image is a little dark. I didn't do my best with getting the settings right, but I used a ZWO 183MC Pro camera and a GSO 6 inch F5 reflector telescope. And as you can see, the image is tracked. I did have it on a Celestron AVX mount. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop this video and all three of these videos into a program called Pre-Image Planetary Processing or PIP. So we have all three of our files right here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to select all three of them and we're gonna drop them into the file list. So once you do that, you're gonna get a pop-up that says you want to process these image with a Bayer pattern and you wanna click yes. And PIP is a fantastic resource because PIP enables you to process images in such a convenient manner. It is great and I strongly recommend it for any beginner astrophotographer. So we have all three of our files loaded up. You can see they're all .avi files, which is what I exported these out of my camera as. We go down here, we can see multiple source files. Right now, I have batch mode selected. Uh, you do not want to select join mode because join mode would be combining all three of these videos into one, which we want to avoid doing. Uh, optimize options. Uh, I have all of these unchecked for this video because I find when doing for lunar mosaics, it is more simple and more convenient just to not worry about any of that. Just get the final sort of video frame to go into stacking. If you do not have tracking, let's say you did this for a Dobsonian, it would be useful to probably check um, solar slash lunar full disk. But because we do have tracking, I'm just going to leave that completely alone. Let's go on over to input options. Uh, this is all fine. You don't have to touch any of this. Processing options. Uh, if you have convert color to monochrome checked, you want to make sure that's unchecked because uh, that will get rid of all of your color data and you want to avoid doing that. So it's important to have that color data because if you were to go into Photoshop, for example, after the fact, and you wanted to edit them, edit your photos, and you want to get some of that beautiful color out of the moon that's actually there, uh, you won't be able to do that. So unfortunately, unchecking this will also increase your file size quite a bit. So make sure you have enough storage to be able to do that. Let's go over to quality options. Uh, I'm going to check enable quality estimation and I'm going to reorder these frames in quality order. So what that will do is that will take the best quality image and make that the very first one and then rank them sort of in descending order. Uh, only keep the best quality frames, keep that checked. Number of frames to keep. Right now I have it set as 1,200, but let's look at how many frames I actually have for each one. I have about 1,200 frames for each panel. We don't wanna process all of these frames. We only wanna process the very best uh, three fourths, I would say. So what I'm going to do is limit that to 800. Uh, this can all stay the way it is. And again, this is not the only way you have to do this. There's certainly many other different ways you can approach processing an image of the moon like this. However, this is the one I find the easiest for me. So animation options, we're not making an anim animation, so we don't have to worry about this. Output, um, you're gonna to wanna to keep your output format either as a .avi, but I'm actually gonna keep it as a .ser because I find that to be the highest quality. Unfortunately, again, it is a larger file size. Output directory, you're gonna keep that as default so that it will keep it, put it in the folder where your videos are stored at. Uh, I leave this all as is. 
and we go over to do processing and then uh, we click start processing and I'm actually going to check open output folder when complete. So we're going to let that go and this will take a few minutes. So we're going to come back once this is done and then load it into our stacking software. Alrighty guys, so our processing has finished up and now we are left with three different files, uh, each saved as a .ser. Again, this was about 800 frames per panel. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop each of these files into a program called AutoStackert. And AutoStackert is a fantastic piece of software. It will actually stack all of these images for you. And the idea being is that if you take a video and stack all the frames, you'll be able to get a sharper uh, final image. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this one in to our image, or excuse me, our piece of software. And then we can see we have our image of the moon. This is looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click, go through these settings really quick with you guys. Right now we see we have image stabilization. Uh, you're gonna wanna leave that checked as surface. Uh, expand, you can leave that as, Laplace, you can leave that as. And then what you're gonna do is gonna hit analyze. And what it will do is it will analyze all of the frames in the videos and sort out which one is the best one for stacking. So that will take just a moment. Great, so we can see we have our quality graph up now. And then as you could expect, because in PIP, we actually went ahead and told PIP to go through and tell us which best, which frame was the best and put that first. You can see the sort of graph sort of decreases in descending order all the way down to the lowest quality one. So our very first frame should be our best one. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go over here to our actual um, processing window and then we're gonna go over to alignment points. From alignment points, you're gonna to wanna to go down to AP size, so alignment point size. Right now I have the alignment point size set at 200. For lunar mosaics and just for the moon in general, I don't find it very useful to have 20, to decrease the size all the way down to 24 because what that will do is that will put hundreds of hundreds of little alignment points on your image, which will take a long time to process and don't necessarily help your image quality that much in my personal opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at 200 and then I'm going to press place alignment points on grid. So I should get about 21 alignment points, all stacked across the image. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through stack options. I'm going to export these images as a .tif. Uh, you can also export it as a .png or a .ftf, FIT, excuse me. I just prefer to use a .tif because it's a little higher quality than PNG and I can look at it easier than a .fit. You're going to want to leave the frame percentage to stack 90%. That's just what I prefer to use. I leave all these checked usually. I don't touch drizzling. And then I'm going to go ahead and click stack. So what this is going to do is stack the image and we hopefully should get a good final image to look at when we're done here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this for the next two frames and then load those into our final stacking program. Okay, so that's finished up and we should now have three images for us to be able to look at so let's take a look, and there we go. As you can see, these images are still pretty dark, but we'll take care of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to load a program called Registax. So Registax is a fantastic piece of software that's completely free. All the software that I'm using, with the exception of Photoshop today, is free to use. And um, it's a great piece of software because it'll allow you to stack as well as sharpen. I just prefer to use AutoStacker for stacking because I find the image quality to be a little better that way versus Registax, but you can choose whatever software you wish to use. But I will be using Registax today to actually sharpen the in each of the frames that I took. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our images and then we're going to drop them into Registax. We're going to click stretch intensity levels to be able to to be able to adjust for that underexposure that I was talking about. So we're gonna click yes. Gonna full screen this again real fast. Great, so we have a little bit of a sharper, uh, brighter image. 
but we want to be able to really stretch the wavelets out to be able to really sharpen the image. So we're gonna go over to the left-hand side under wavelets. I keep all the settings right here the same. You're gonna go down to layer one for your first wavelet, and then you're gonna adjust it just a little bit, and that should begin to sharpen the image. So it's, if you can look closely, you can see this little part of the moon is a little sharper. Uh, I find that good right there. So what I'm going to do is click do all. And again, you can do a lot more here. This is just a very simple, basic processing tutorial. And once do all is completed, your final image of the moon should be pretty sharp. So what you want to do now is you want to actually save this scheme so that this wavelet is saved for your other three panels. So what we're gonna do is click save scheme and then we're gonna save as moon mosaic. And then we're gonna repeat that process for the next three panels. You're gonna to wanna to go back into your next frame. Um, you're gonna drop that into Registax again, stretch the intensity levels. And then again, uh, click load scheme right here. And then once that's done, click do all. And once again, those same wavelets that we applied on the last image will be applied to this image. So I'll repeat this one more time with the third frame. And then once we're done, we'll load it into our stitching software. Alrighty guys, so we have finished up and we've gone ahead and saved all three of those frames. I actually forgot in that last part of the video to save my very first image. So you definitely don't want to do that. Make sure you save all of your frames. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take all three of these frames right here and then we're gonna drop them into a program called Microsoft Image Composite Editor, or Microsoft ICE. Microsoft ICE is a fantastic piece of software that will enable you to easily stitch together panoramas. Uh, it also works well for mosaics. So what we're going to do is drop all of these images into Microsoft ICE. We're gonna leave simple panorama checked. We're gonna be just doing a very quick simple panorama. We're gonna click next. We're gonna allow it to align the image. Uh, this is a preview of what that's going to look like. And then once that's done, click next. And then there you go. You have a nice uh, stitch of the moon. Let's zoom in here a little bit. You can see that detail I was talking about. There's some beautiful, beautiful detail here on the moon. Much higher detail than you would had you had just stuck your camera into a, um, the eyepiece by taking magnified images with a Barlow lens or something similar or a high focal length telescope, you can get a much higher quality image than you would just by taking a full frame sort of prime focus image. So we're gonna click next and then I'm going to save this as again as a .tiff file. We're gonna click export to disk and then we're going to go ahead and go into the Photoshop part of the tutorial. Alrighty, so we've opened up the latest version of Photoshop and we've gone ahead and loaded our mosaic into Photoshop. And so we're just gonna do some basic touch-ups. You don't necessarily have to use Photoshop. I just prefer to use Photoshop for this because I just find it pretty easy and straightforward. But any uh, program like GIMP or paint.net would be fantastic ways for you to edit these images. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go up to image and the very first thing I'm gonna do is flip the moon 180 degrees to sort of get it to that natural rotation we're all more familiar with. And then I'm gonna to go to image and then I'm gonna to go to adjustments and then I'm gonna to go to levels. What I'm gonna do on levels is I'm just going to press auto. So that will brighten the image up a little bit more. Next thing I'm going to do is go up to image again, then go down to auto color and then what this is going to do is automatically color the image of the moon to give it that sort of white gray look that you are more familiar to seeing. So there we have it. We have a nice, beautiful shot of the moon. We're just gonna do some basic adjustments here. I'm gonna to go to image, and then I'm gonna to go to adjustments, and then I'm gonna to go to hue slash saturation, and then I'm going to up the hue just a bit that's going to bring out some of the browns and the blues in the lunar surface. I believe if I'm not mistaken, the greens and browns represent uh, iron and the blues represent titanium basalt. 
Um, somebody might have to check me on that though, but that's from my understanding. So we have a little bit of a color moon going on now. We're gonna go to image, press auto color one more time. I just find that helps sometimes, but in this case it didn't. Image, adjustments, and then brightness, contrast. I'm going to drop the brightness down a little bit and then adjust the contrast. So I'm very happy with this. I consider this a final image and I think this looks really good and this would be something to be really proud of if you got to this point. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a thing or two on how to make a beautiful mosaic of the moon. If you have any questions in the comments, please let me know and we'll be more than happy to answer them. But again, my name is Kyle. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and always remember to keep looking up.